Hello friends, welcome back to Digitalk and part 8 of JBoss series. In this uh, session, we will learn how we can configure the data source in JBoss application server. Okay, so there are specific steps when we talk about the configuration of data source in JBoss. Okay, uh, it's not like that you can directly go to the uh, console of JBoss and then configure it from there directly. Before that one, you have to register the driver, a specific director for which database you are going to create the data source. Okay, for example, in this session, I'm going to explain you how we can configure the data source uh, to connect to our Oracle database, right? So, the first step for that is you have to uh, download and install the database driver as a core module. Okay, so when we talk about the Oracle, for that, you have to download the Oracle driver file from the Oracle website, right? So, once it is downloaded, you have to add the JDBC driver as a core module in the JBoss, right? This is the command that you can use for registration as a core module. Right, so once you registered the driver file of Oracle as a core module, okay, it will be copied inside the Oracle main folder, which is inside your JBoss home modules, com, Oracle, and main. That means this particular jar file along with a module XML file will be created inside this particular folder. So that means you have uh, registered or you can install the Oracle JDBC driver as a core module in JBoss. So once this step is completed, the second step is to register the JDBC, JDBC driver. Right. So once your JDBC driver is registered with the JBoss, then you can able to create the data source from the console as well as from the command line as well. Right. So to register your JDBC driver, once you have uh, uh, installed as a core module, you have to run this particular command where you have to provide the subsystem as JDBC uh, data source. Right. And then you have to provide the JDBC driver information here. What is the driver? Driver name is Oracle and then module name is com.oracle. This is the class file for uh, for your JDBC driver, which is defined inside the uh, JDBC jar file. Right. And then you have to provide the uh, driver information in this particular command. Okay. So this is the driver information or driver class name, which is inside your particular driver jar file from the Oracle. Right. So once you have registered, after that, you can uh, validate the configuration with the help of this command whether the registration has been successful or not. Okay, this this will uh, give you the output. So once you have installed the JDBC uh, driver as a core module and then you have registered the JDBC driver with the JBoss, after that you can create uh, the data source either from the console or either using the command line. So if you are going to use with the command line, then this is the syntax for that one, data hyphen source and add hyphen then name and then lot of parameters that we provide manually from when we configure it from the console. Same all variables you need to provide from the command line, right? So what are the major uh, inputs that we provide during the configuration of data source is the name of data source, the name of JNDI, right? So this is a JNDI name that your application used to connect with this particular data source, okay? So you have to make sure this is the same JNDI name which is defined in your application. Otherwise, your application will not able to contact this particular data source, right? And then we have to provide the driver name. If we are going with the Oracle, then you have to provide the connection, how the connection will be established to your database for the creation of the connection, right? This is the uh, JDBC thin driver, and then it will, uh, the host on which your database is installed, what is the port of your database, and what is the, your service name or the SID. Okay, and then your username and password and if you would like to define the minimum and maximum pool capacity, then you can define here from this particular command line. Okay, there are a lot of other options as well, which is available to configure via the command line. So, this is the way how we can configure it from the command line and other option is we can configure it from the JBoss admin console as well. Right. So, let me show you the execution of this one. Okay, and before showing the execution, let me show you one more important variable. Uh, which is use as id as service listener on okay so if you are going to use the oracle database okay and if you are doing uh, working on some uh, development or testing environment where you have a standalone database right uh, there you may need to define this parameter in your uh, listener.ora file okay listener.ora file of your database after that you can bounce your listener Okay, so otherwise you may get the error when you will try to register the data source from uh, data source, you will get the SID is not uh, is not able to recognize the SID or the service name, right? So define this uh, parameter in your listener file and then restart your listener and then go for all the steps, right? So for first step, if you let me show you from the scratch, okay, you can download the EF from the uh, Red Hat website or maybe you can download the Wildfly, which is the open source version of your data, uh, your JBoss, okay? And 
to to download it from the uh, red hat website you can search for download jboss ef okay and then you can click on the first option which is jboss enterprise application and then here you will see the options to download okay so this is the option for download the as a zip file so you can click on the download okay and then it will prompt you for the uh, your username and password so if you don't have a username and password then you can create for free okay and once it is registered you can download the zip file from the from your um, jboss uh, ef website from the red hat okay okay so next task is you have to download the oracle jdbc driver for that you can uh, go to this uh, oracle website okay and there you will see the ojdbc 11 and 8 or some different versions of the jar file okay so if you are using the jdk 11 17 19 or 21 then you can download the 11 dot jar if you are on jdk 18 or 11 then you can use the ojdbc a dot jar okay so if you have downloaded the current eap version current version of uh, jboss eap from the red hat website right so then current version is supported on the jdk 11 so if you have a jdk 8 is installed and you are going trying to start your eap 8.0 then it will not start okay it will throw you the some error okay so make sure you are using the uh, jdk 11 in that case right so once you have downloaded the jdk driver from here you can save it in some location so i have saved inside my same uh, location where i have downloaded and extracted my J, uh, the gboss gboss file so i have downloaded the ojdbc a dot jar okay which is saved here right and once it is done that means uh, uh, for the jboss okay if you have already done this then you can skip this step if you have not done then if you have downloaded the fresh jboss then you have to follow this one after the download what we do is we create a, a user right in the jboss which is a management user so for that we run the add user command okay so let me set the java home okay so java home is uh, c colon slash java mm, it in my case okay so let me add a user user type is a a which is a management user okay so let me give it name as jboss okay and the password jboss123 let me click yes right and jboss so let me render a password jboss123 jboss123 so let me click enter okay this is correct yes Right. so that means user is added to the management user right so i have uh, created a user for the management console right so now i will start the jboss in standalone mode okay so now the jboss is getting started in the standalone mode okay and let me uh, go to and then let me try to access the console from here okay so local host and then 9990 and then slash console it will prompt you for the username and password so provide which we have users using the add user jboss123 okay so now we are on the management console right you can see the deployment configurations and then different options are here right so but now what we need to do is before uh, going for the configuration of the data source what we need to do first we have to register sorry we have to install the jdbc driver as a core module right and then we have to register the jdbc driver so for that what we will do is we will go here and then we will uh, run the cli okay which is the command line utility for the jboss okay so we will use this for registration so let me set the java home equal to c colon and then java 8 now let me run the cli okay so once i am at the cli i am in the disconnected mode right it is not connected to the running instance of jboss so it is showing as a disconnected mode what i will do is i will run this particular i will run this module add command okay and let me run it here let me copy and let me run it here okay now it is uh, completed right so that means we have uh, registered or installed this particular driver file which we have downloaded from the oracle website right and after this one it will uh, create a file which is inside module com oracle and main so here you can see that now you have a file jdbc driver file and then a module.xml file which will have the module names 
okay so that means now our first step is completed okay which is the installation of jdbc driver as a core module is done right and second this is the uh, where we have to register jdbc driver but that is required to be run in the connect mode okay so what i will do is i will uh, log out and then i will again run this command by connecting to my running jboss instance right which we have running in the admin mode in the standalone mode okay so now we can are connect, we are connected with our running jboss instance right so now we have to run this particular command right to register the oracle jdbc driver with the jboss okay so let me copy it and then paste it here so now you can see the outcome is success right so that means your uh, this jdbc driver is now registered with the jboss after the we have registered is as a core module so now if you would like to verify the configuration then this is the command for the validation here you can see that the outcome is success and this is the result the whatever the jdbc driver is registered what is the name of your class file of the driver everything is showing here right so now we have uh, uh, installed the jdbc driver as core module and then we have registered the jdbc driver with the jboss so now we are good to go for the configurations of the data source either from the command line or either from the console okay so let me first show you the registration of using the command line so this is i have explained initially right then whatever the configuration that we have provided okay so let me run it here from here okay so now you can see that we have created a one uh, data source with the name of digitalk ds right and this is the jndi name which we are going to use in our application for the connectivity this is the driver name and this is the configuration of the connection which we have provided what is the uh, listener ip address of our database what is the port what is the service name or sid name what is the username what is the password right we want a jta to be true or not what is the minimum and maximum capacity what is the password so we have given the complete information that we need for the data source and now it is registered okay and let me verify it from the console as well whether it is created or not for that you have to go to the console click on configurations okay subsystems and inside that data source and drivers and then here you will see the drivers and data sources if you will click on jdbc drivers then you can see here the oracle a listing here and this is the driver class name and this is the driver class for the xa data source right and if you click on data source now you can see that we have a digitalk ds which we have created from the command line right this is the name that we had given if i click on this one then you can see it is enabled and these are the configurations that that you can see from here okay if you would like to uh, disable it you can disable it from here you would like to remove it then you can remove it as well you would like to test the connection you can test the connection from here you can see that it is tested successfully right and now this is the way we have registered it from the uh, command line right and now what if you would like to register it as from the <coughs> admin console okay so what is the option for that one so let me show you that option as well so for that you have to click on this data source drop box and then click on add data source right so here you have to select the oracle option we are going to register for the oracle similarly you have a different supported database listing here okay and if you are going for other database then make sure you are following the same guidelines that i have mentioned here installation of corresponding database driver and then the registration of the driver right according to the database that you are going to use once it is done then you go for the configuration of the data source from the console or by the command line so let me select the oracle we click on next so this is what is the name of data so let me take it the default one oracle ds and let me select the default jndi named oracle ds click on next this is the driver name this is the driver class automatically taken because we have registered the jdbc driver and we have selected the oracle as database we are going to be created right uh, data source to be created so it will automatically taken the driver class for you click on next so here you have to specify the connection url so i have uh, let me copy paste it from here okay this is the url for our database so this is the thin driver and then this is the host port and this is our sid let me give the username and let me give the password okay click on next now you can here test the connection you can see the test connection is successful right click on next and then you can click on finish okay and now you can click on close right so now you can see that we have a oracle ds is created here right if you would like to uh, to disable it you can disable it from here you want to test the connection you can test it from here right if you want to remove it then you can remove the configuration from here
view the configuration of your data source or to change some of the parameters you can click on the view right here you can see the different parameters of your the data source that we have configured right and if you would like to change any of the setting here you can click on this edit option after that you can edit any of the option whatever you wanted to change here right you would like to increase um, uh, minimum or maximum capacity then you can increase from here you can specify the initial size right there are different parameters that if you would like to configure then for that each you have to click on the edit option right and let me click on back right so this is how we have to configure we configure the data source in the jboss okay so let me do a quick repack what we have done is we have uh, downloaded the driver uh, from the oracle website right because we have configured the oracle database and then we have added the jdbc driver as a core module once it was added you will see the file will be copied inside this location along with a module file xml file will also be created and then we have registered the jdbc driver using this particular command and once it was registered then we have created one data source using the command line and second data source we have created from the console right so thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for the next video